Hey guys, today I'm going to be doing a video on this pen right here. Uh, as you can tell from the box, it's a fountain pen made by the company Hero. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Hero is a Chinese pen manufacturing company. Um, I, I know they're, you know, when you look on the forums, uh, they're kind of known for making like a, a Parker 51 style clone. Um, I believe. Uh, the gold nib version is the uh, Hero 100, uh, and then there's also like the 600 series Hero that's um, plastic with a steel nib um, instead of with a gold nib. Um, they also, I think, in the last year, they've also come out with kind of like a Lamy Safari knockoff. Um, but regardless, I'm not going to really get into those pens. Uh, I'm just going to mainly focus on this pen. Um, this pen is a Hero 300, more specifically a Hero 300F, I believe. Uh, I got this from um, from I Sell Pens uh, from Todd, you know, who runs a really great site that has really good prices. Um, this was purchased for I think around forty-five dollars, and that's pretty typical for the price you're going to pay, even if you were to order directly from a source in China. Uh, so, you know, definitely great because I didn't have to wait two to three weeks to get the pen. Uh, I only waited three days um, to get it shipped from, I believe Todd's in Arizona, um, first class mail. Uh, so this is the packaging that it comes with. Uh, nothing super fancy, it's just a pretty plain box. Um, there's Hero's website if you want to look into more information about this company. Uh, and in here, this is like another like paperized uh, cardboard box type deal. And there is the pen. Um, and below here is also kind of like a information and warranty pamphlet. Uh, I won't really get into. Apparently, you know, they, they do have like a, according to this book, they do have a, like a pretty amazing warranty if you believe what they'll read. Um, Although generally, I don't really think that people will really take advantage of that warranty. Uh, you know, the, you know, they don't really make a lot of super expensive pens. Uh, pens with the uh, you know 12, 14, or 18 karat gold nibs uh, are priced around you know the 40 to 60 dollar range, and I think that's like some of the most expensive pens they make. Uh, I haven't had this pen for a long time. I got this pen uh, just a few days ago. And I actually won't be keeping this pen for a long time, so I can't really do an extended review. Um, this is more going to be like really just a basic initial impressions. Uh, I, you know, it's my first hero pen, so it's not like I have a lot of experience with uh, previous hero pens. Um, the reason why I got this was actually f as a gift for a friend of mine. Um, you know, he kind of prefers heavier pens, and he doesn't really have any uh, gold nib fountain pens yet. So I figured, you know, maybe you know because it's such a relatively heavy pen, and there is a 12 karat gold nib on this pen, I figured it'd make a like a nice little gift. Uh, so he's actually he actually uh, started he actually got a new job he'll be starting soon, uh, which is why I can't really um, keep this pen for that long to write forth for an extended period of time. Um, the only reason why I even really inked it up uh, when I gift pens out, I do like to ink them up first if I have it sent to me first instead of directly to the recipient, uh, and that's mainly just for um, like nib tuning or tine alignment. Uh, you know, I, I, granted, I am inking up the pen; it's no longer brand new, uh, but you know, performance. I'm basically trying to guarantee writing performance versus you know what I think you know most factory pens they don't really write all that well. Anyway, um, the cap. I believe the cap and the body are made out of brass. Uh, if you take a look inside, you can see like that brass coloration. And then they are plastic coated, and then also I think carded was coated with some kind of like I don't want like I don't want to say it's necessarily like a lacquer finish, uh, but it's not. You know, it does definitely doesn't feel like it's direct plastic. I could be wrong. This could just be a regular plastic coating, but it seems really shiny to be just plain plastic. Um, the pen body itself is actually surprisingly light considering the inside is supposed to be brass. Uh, when you actually have the pen, uh, and it does come with a converter as you can see here, which surprising enough is very high quality for a Chinese converter. Um, it, it's slightly, I feel like the opening is slightly bigger than like an international cartridge or a converter opening for the, um, the, the nipple size. So I don't necessarily think you can buy these converters to use in a pen that takes international cartridges, um, but you can squeeze on an international converter onto this, this pen itself, uh, just not the other way around, because I feel like the, the nipple on this is slightly bigger, so if you wanted to, you could force an international cartridge on there. Um, 
But surprisingly enough, even though the this like it's not it's definitely not lightweight, but it's not super as heavy as I thought it would be. And most of the weight that actually comes with the pen body is actually in this section area, which like I don't know exactly what it's made out of, but that's you know that takes up the bulk of the weight of this pen itself. Um, it's a little too heavy for me. I I do prefer um, lighter weight pens. Um, I feel like, if anything, with this kind of weight, it's actually a little too front balanced. And as I'm writing with it, because I hold the pens with a relatively light grip, I feel like the pen wants to just kind of like slide out of my fingertips. Uh, versus, you know, back heavy pens, which I also don't like, which feel like they're lifting up the nib too much from the paper. Um, you know, my heaviest pen would probably be my uh, Homo Sapiens um, midi size from Visconti. And granted, even because it's a heavy pen, uh, it's still not as comfortable for me to write with versus some of my lighter pens like my uh, Pelican M600. Um, but it is a much better balance in that the weight isn't all in the back or the front. So I can write for an extended period of time with that pen and it's not really a big deal for me. Uh, for me, like I, I tried writing for around 20 minutes with this pen and it, it got a little uncomfortable. Uh, granted, it's not necessarily a small pen either. So it's not, you know, it's relatively comfortable in the hand. I just don't like the forward balance in terms of the weight. The other uh, pen... The pen cap is also very heavy. Um, there is an inner cap in there, which I feel would seal the uh, the pen quite well. Uh, this is on slip-on cap, and on top there's kind of like a steel insert there. Um, and also the clip itself is actually two-tone. Uh, I'm not sure if you'll be able to make out with the lighting, but you can see there's like kind of like a gold design there. Right there, you can see there's kind of like a gold design, uh, so it's like a two-tone uh, cap. Uh, you know, it also says a hero with some uh, Chinese writing there, and the number 300 on this cat band. Or actually, no, this section band. It's not necessarily a cat band. Um, like I said before, it has a 12 karat gold nib. Um, it is a dual tone gold nib. And, you know, f in terms of nib design, it's not bad. It actually has the, uh, the hero, you know, hero company emblem, and it says 12K right below it. And you can see the dual tone uh, with the silver plating towards the nib end. Uh, it, it actually has um, that emblem uh, engraved into the nib itself. Uh, you know, for a 12 karat gold nib, uh, it's not that bad. Uh, you know, what people might consider like a stiff nail nib, uh, you know, versus like vintage flex. Obviously, it's going to be a lot stiffer than a vintage gold, like 14 karat gold nib. At the same time, I wouldn't necessarily call this a nail. You know, this is, isn't a nib that I would feel comfortable writing carbon, like on carbon paper with, uh, just because it does have a little bit of flex. Uh, the way I kind of see it is, it, you know, it's not a very big nib, so the softness of this nib feels very similar to um, like the Pelican M600's 14 karat gold nib uh, which you know isn't I, what you know some people may consider a nail I don't the tines do give a little bit you can get some line variation with it uh, without even really pressing all that hard um, and it's also like what I consider it would actually be more similar to Pelican's M200 steel nibs and that granted they are steel uh, but they do have quite a soft cushiony feeling when you're writing with so if you actually look at this pen and how it writes you know that's like no basically no pressure and then I can put you know a slight bit of pressure on there and you can increase the line width versus no pressure at all uh, so you know one of the reasons why I got this pen, and I kind of took a risk uh, because I wanted to get my friend a gold nib pen, was that when he wrote with my M600, he really he really liked the um, the soft cushion feeling that that nib provided versus the steel nib that he had um, in terms of his Parker Urban, which has a very stiff nail-like steel nib, uh, or even the Pilot 78G that he has, which is a little softer than the, than the Parker Urban for sure, but definitely not as soft as like the Pelican 14 karat gold nib on the M600. Um, the nib out of box uh, was not that bad. Um, it is a little scratchy, there is like, not necessarily scratchy, there is some feedback to it. It's probably a little more feedback than I would prefer for my fountain pens. Um, but I personally know that he doesn't like super glass smooth nibs, so I'm leaving the nib polish as is. Uh, what I did have to do was adjust the tines just a little bit. Uh, not that much, you know, I feel like with the amount of feedback you're getting from the nib to begin with, even if I had left the tines as they were, it wouldn't have felt really that much scratchier. Uh, it's just aligning the tines now 
just makes the feedback a little more consistent on throughout the different strokes versus just having more feedback on one stroke and less feedback through the other. Uh, in terms of flow, it's not bad. I, you know, it's it's like I'd say it's like a medium wetness. You, know, you can definitely see like it does glisten on the paper. Uh, granted, this is Rhodia paper, but it's not. Uh, it's not a. Uh, excuse me, that was my phone. Uh, it's not super dry either. Um, you know, one of the big problems that he had with his Parker Urban was that it only came in a medium nib and that nib was really really wet uh, and because of the nib design I tried actually making the nib uh, making the pen write a little drier but I couldn't really accomplish that uh, you know with a more classic nib like this that's less tubular and you know less hooded um, it's a lot easier to definitely adjust the flow on it um, but I didn't really do that all that much flow adjustment with this pen um, in terms of the overall size, I have my M600 here. Uh, you can see it's just, you know, capped. It's just slightly longer than the M600. Uh, not by much, though. And the cap is so heavy. When, when you hold the pen here, and I hold it right here at this section ring, I can definitely feel the weight of the pen, like, pulling towards the cap end versus the, uh, the, uh, b the body end. The pen uncapped uh, right now is... Basically the same size as an M600. Uh, to be fair though, I do have a M200 steel nib on this M600 body right now. Uh, so the M200 nib is slightly shorter than the regular M600 nib, but really not that, like not by much, like maybe less than a millimeter extra length in the uh, M600 gold nib. So, you know, it's a very nice size pen. You know, if, you know, for me, I, I kind of prefer this size of pen. I don't really like slimmer pens because I feel it's a little uncomfortable to write with for an extended period of times. And at the same time, I don't like overly large pens. Uh, but that may be because most of the large pens that I have handled have been a little more heavier than I would prefer or more back heavy, you know, in terms of like the Pelican M800 or um, the M1000. Uh, you know, I do have a custom pen coming in that's made purely out of ebonite that's going to be like an eyedropper fill. So, you know, because ebonite is such a light material, that may be better, but I've yet to get the pen yet. I think I'm a few months out before I get that pen, so I can't really say for sure. But at least for now, I've been using this pen for several months now as an everyday pen, and I've basically loved this size. So I have no real issues with the size of this pen in terms of the uh, section diameter or the length. Uh, you know, I don't have to post it. Because the cap is so heavy, I feel like if you were to post it, then this feels a little too back heavy for me. Um, but honestly, in terms of the overall balance, uh, because the section is so heavy and the cap is heavy, it kind of counteracts itself a little bit in that it brings the balance point a little higher. Uh, so it doesn't necessarily feel like it's pulling the pen out of your hand. Uh, but overall, it's just too heavy for me. My friend does prefer heavier pens, so this may work out perfectly for him. So... For the price range of like $45, $50, it's not, it's definitely not like a, like I feel it's not a great entry level pen. Um, for someone who, who's completely new to fountain pens, it's quite a bit of money to spend. Um, at the same time, you know, you're talking about the price range that a lot of people recommend Twisbees for. And granted, it does have a gold nib. Um, you're missing out on certain aspects of the pen such as you know easy maintainability of you know taking everything apart I didn't really want to mess too much about taking taking the feed out and the nib off you know versus with the Twisby they're very transparent about how you take the pen apart uh, and also obviously a lot of the Twisbees have piston fills versus this which is just cartridge converter uh, like I said I feel like the international converter I tried using fit a little loose on the um no, my mistake. It fit fine. Never mind. It was the other way around where this converter didn't fit all that well in the uh, international cartridge. So, you know, you should be able to use international cartridge um, inks if you wanted to. And also go ahead and feel free to use uh, the regular converter. Um, but you're not going to get the same capacity as you may get from a piston fill pen. So, you know, if, if you're looking for an entry-level gold nib pen, I guess this would probably be one route to go with. Uh, you know, do realize that it's not necessarily flexible. You're not going to get the same line variation uh, as you would with, like, a Namiki Falcon or, you know, one of the uh, Pilot Soft Nibs. But it's one of the cheapest gold nibs you can get outside of maybe going towards some of, like, the, you know, one of the basic Platinums or 
uh, some I think Pilot even makes it like a very basic pen. I know Platinum makes one pen. It's either called the Basic or the Classic. It's an all plastic body pen with the 14 karat gold nib. Uh, for around like fifty dollars, you get it from Japan. Uh, but it's a very lightweight pen, and it's only cartridge converter, I believe. And Platinum also makes a desk pen with a 14 karat gold nib that you can get for around like forty dollars. Um, but those are, like I said, both are very lightweight pens, and if you're not a fan of lightweight pens, then you won't like them. This is a little heavier, so if you do want a heavier, more substantial, or like nicer looking pen, uh, then I guess, you know, you could, it doesn't hurt to check this pen out. Uh, and if it doesn't really work well for you, then, you know, I believe you, you can easily resell some of the Hero pens at a slight loss if you had to, um, because people are looking for cheaper alternatives to the higher end gold nib pens. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, sorry I couldn't really do more of an in-depth review uh, or anything. I didn't really get all that much time to use it, uh, and I won't be doing like a follow-up video on this or anything. Uh, so just kind of an, an, an initial impressions for anyone who is actually looking into maybe getting the Hero 300. I haven't really seen all that information about uh, all that much information about this particular model of pen. Uh, it seems like more people are focusing on the Parker 51 copy and the uh, Lamy Safari copy. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you found it useful, and thanks.